Hey there, Art Snackers. It's once again time for another episode of Hot in the Shop. This is a series where we take a closer look at some fabulous art supplies available in the Art Snack Shop. In the last video, I made a seashell, and in this video, I'm going to take you all the way to the ocean. We're going to practice painting a wave with loose and expressive marks with acrylic paint. But if you're new to the series, let me introduce myself. My name is Jenny, and I'm a mixed media artist. When I'm not on the Art Snacks channel having a blast with their products, you can find me at anartfullylivelife.com. I can't wait to show you what we're going to get into today, so let's get to it. The main attraction of this video is the Sennelier Abstract Matte Soft Body Acrylic Paint. It comes in the squeeze pouch designed so that you can use every last dollop of paint. I think it adds to the whole sensory experience of working with these supplies. In the Art Snacks shop, you'll find the colors Permanent Green Light, Titanium White, Primary Yellow, Primary Blue, and Primary Red. The surface I'm using today is the Canson Plain Air Mixed Media Art Board. The dimensions are 8x10 and there are 10 boards in this pad. It's a versatile substrate that can handle wet or dry media and sturdy enough to handle the paint I'll be putting on it today. I find it helpful to have a few guidelines, so I'm using the Credicolor Fine Art Graphite Pencil in 2H to make my horizon line and my wave. I made the horizon line 3 inches from the top and yes, I did use a ruler, but you certainly could eyeball it if you wanted to. I'm putting the wave in on just a little bit of an angle here, so it's like we're getting a three-quarter view of the inside of the curl on this wave. My elements are roughly placed on the artboard, and now it's time to get out the paint. I am using the Jack Richardson Gray Matters Paper Palette. The warm gray tone of the surface allows you to mix accurate color values so you know exactly what color you're putting down on your surface. I'm putting in the sky first and I have a really good idea of the colors that I want to use for it. So I put a little bit of red and a little bit of blue on my palette and then two dollops of white. I'm going to mix the paint using the brush that I'm going to use throughout this whole session. It's the King Art Radiant Tacline Oval Wash Size Half Inch. You'll see that it's pretty versatile and I'll be making a variety of marks with it throughout this painting. Now I know from experience that I don't want to use the blue straight out of the tube, or I guess this is the squeeze packet, anyhow. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I like a little more pink in my sky. I want to mix a little red and a little blue in with a lot of white. Then I apply it to the board in horizontal strokes. As I move up into the painting, I just add a little more blue and red so that the sky looks darker as it goes to the top. The whole point of this painting is to stay loose and expressive, so I'm not too concerned with the exact brush strokes. In fact, I add a little texture to the sky by using a circular motion with the flat side of the brush. With the sky filled in, let's move on to the water, starting with the part that is farthest away from us. Because it is in the distance, I want it to be dark and muted. I'm mixing the blue and the green and adding a touch of red. The red both darkens the blue and neutralizes the green. I'm painting it in all the way to the right, about a middle third of the page down. And you can see I covered up the little bit of the horizon line. It does not have to look perfect. Most of it will get covered anyway. Next, I'm mixing up a mid to light aqua green, and that consists of blue, green, and white. And this will be the base color for the wave. The top of the wave will go above the horizon line, and the whole length of the wave will take up about three quarters of the artboard. I'm using the brush strokes to create the form of the wave. By using C-curve brush strokes, I can see how the wave is taking shape. I dipped my brush into white and moved it along the top of the wave. This is basically for my benefit so I can see how the wave is coming along. I add more blue and red to that mid-tone green to darken it up and then apply the mixture to the base of the wave. And now I need to fill in that foreground with a light aqua green. I'm using rough brush strokes to transition from the dark to light green. This does not have to be perfect. I am just filling it in for, you know, a base layer. A lot of it's going to get covered up. I'm adding light aqua to define the top of the wave. And adding brush strokes of dark green and blue to the base of the wave. So it looks like it's in shadow. And since you can catch some of that shadow on the top of the wave, I just put a few brush strokes of that, of the darker color in there too. Mm -hmm. 
I punched up the water along the horizon line and took that same blue and added in a few places in the wave and then toward the bottom left. Here's the fun part where we get to add a lot of that sea foam and spray. I pinched the ends of the brush together so I could get a more irregular shape. And then I twisted it and turned it as I was putting the white down. One thing I haven't shared with you yet is that these paints have a superpower. Okay, maybe not a superpower, but it is pretty cool. It consists of eight different tips that you can screw onto the nozzle of these paints. You can make thin lines, fat lines, dots, just any way you wanna apply these paints through these tips. I'm using the tip that has the three tiny little holes in it. So every time I lay down a strip of paint, it has three tiny lines with it. Now you can see I wasn't super careful laying that down, but it's okay. Each section of those three little lines gave me enough white paint to spread around and mix with other colors to create the wave. You can see, I'm still going with the contour of the wave. And now I switch off the tip, I put the big circle tip on there and make these bigger blobs of paint. I rinsed my brush out really well in the water and then dried it off the best I could so it's still a little damp. And then I pinched the ends of the bristles together again. And then basically I'm just spreading around that white paint. So I'm just moving the blobs around, picking up paint from those blobs and dispersing it in other places on this composition. Now you don't want all of the sea foam and the spray to be just stark white. So it's okay if while you're dabbing it on the artboard, if it picks up some other colors and darkens some of the white because it, that will make some shadow. Or you can just pick it up from your palette and add it where you feel you need it, it should be anyway. So at this point, I am so close to being done, but I noticed that I want a little bit more contrast between the wave and the sky, so I add a few more darker brush strokes. All right, let's address that naked spot in the lower right of the artboard. I fill it in with a light aqua base and then pick up some of that white paint that's on the artboard already because there's a lot of white paint just chilling on that artboard. I'm stippling it onto the lower right corner, just dispersing it, adding a little bit of shadow. And I do add a little bit of the sky color just to keep it consistent. I hope you've enjoyed this video. All the supplies I've used today can be found in a link in the description box below. And to get 15% off these select products, just use coupon code HOT15 at checkout. While you're here, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe for more videos, join us for free over on Mix, and follow Art Snacks on social media.